Well, hello there. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Professor Thomas McCallaghan. And while I'm here to tell you about a, a very interesting fish known as the sturgeon. You see, many years ago, the land of dinosaurs, there lived an amazing specimen, a fish known as the sturgeon. And believe it or not, this fish is still alive today. You see, there are many types of sturgeon. Green sturgeon, gulf sturgeon, heck, even Chinese sturgeon. But I'm here to tell you about two very special types of sturgeon that live in the Connecticut River. The Atlantic sturgeon and the short-nosed sturgeon. Now the Atlantic sturgeon, well, it's a mighty big fish. It ranges from about six to 15 feet, 300 to 800 pounds, and it can live to be 60 years old. My, my. Actually, the Atlantic sturgeon has one of the largest snouts of all the sturgeons. Their color ranges from blue, blackish to greenish, yellow, oliveish color. But their underside, as all sturgeon, are white. And their mouth, the mouths of the sturgeon, are so unique, almost on the underside of their face. Very peculiar. Many people say that sturgeon looks like something out of a scary movie. But not that scary. Because, well, they don't even have any teeth. So although they may look like frightening man-eaters, completely harmless, they simply feed off the bottom of rivers, eating insects and crustaceans. Not man flesh. Because sturgeon are anadromous fish, live in salt water, spawn in fresh water. After they spawn, the babies live in fresh water for about six years until they start floating down to the ocean. You see, a female can lay from 800,000 to 3.75 million eggs. I tell you, that's quite a lot of eggs. After she lays them, she swims right on back to the ocean. But the male, the male stays with the babies until, well, until the river gets too cold and the current gets too strong, in which case he must return to the ocean as well. Like most sturgeon babies, after quite a while in fresh water, they float down to the ocean where they live, but they don't do much except hide under rocks and stay away from predators because they have this big kind of yoky, sacky thing on them, as do most fish. But later when that's gone, dissolved, they are finally able to move freely about their homes and go wherever they feel. Although, it's not like they spawn every year. Usually around here in Massachusetts, the spawning time starts around May. They spawn every two, three, four years. Though not much else is known about this breeding process. Except that, well, they usually like to spawn in very fast moving and rocky rivers. But now back to the Atlantic sturgeon. See, back in the olden times, people thought Atlantic sturgeon were just creepy and useless. No need for them. Throw them back. We have more profitable fish to capture. But soon they realized that their skin made quite a nice kind of leathery texture that they put to make, you know, leather, book covers, clothing. They even put some of their little jelly-like kind of substances in jellies and wines and beers. Well, now you can see why. They started using them so much, they started to grow less and less in population and would be endangered, but luckily, they're not. People were told to cut down, so they're simply just sort of threatened. Not that big a deal. We should be careful. All the dams and constructions we build, well, they really damage the habitats of the Atlantic sturgeon. So. Don't pollute. But now we should go on to our other subject, the short-nosed sturgeon. A lot like the Atlantic sturgeon, although 
This sturgeon is indeed endangered and needs your help. The short-nosed sturgeon looks quite a lot like the Atlantic sturgeon. Actually, they're mistaken for one another. Oh, so much. But there are some major differences. The short-nosed sturgeon is much shorter than the Atlantic sturgeon. Atlantic sturgeon is 6 to 15 feet. Short-nosed sturgeon, 3 to 5 feet. It also weighs quite a lot less. The Atlantic sturgeon, what, 300 to 800 pounds? The short-nosed sturgeon, not so much. And the snout. The Atlantic sturgeon has one of the longest snouts, where the short-nosed sturgeon's snout is very blunt. And also, like the Atlantic sturgeon, they can live to be around 60 years old. The record for female is 67 years old, actually. And yet, some of them may not have that long to live. They're an endangered species, as I said before. Not like the Atlantic sturgeon, where they're just threatened. These right here are endangered, and we don't stop with our dams and constructions and bridge building. They could go extinct. We don't want that to happen. Although maybe they look scary and you may think, oh, they're not important. Every creature on this earth is important to you and I. Important to the whole world. So we need to help these sturgeon. Help bring them back to their regular population. And there are some people who are willing to do this. They're making a plan recovery for the short-nosed sturgeon. They're going to... Well, they're going to rebuild some of the habitats and try to get more sturgeon to go around, build up the population once more. They say they should no longer be endangered by the year 2024. Well, let's hope they're right. Now, kids, I hope I've uh, educated you all on the serious issues on the Atlantic and the short-nosed sturgeon. I have to go somewhere. Not sure where. But I have to go. See you next time.